Hello, I'm JW. This time another item that's been sent in, and uh, here it is. It's one of these uh, three-way cube adapters. So you've got to plug three things into one outlet, and this one comes with a plug already installed there, and uh, the plug itself is actually completely seized and jammed in there, so of course it uh, can't be got out of there. Now it comes with a note, so uh, let's have a look at that. So this is what we've got. It's a UK plug here. It does have a fuse inside, and it's got three sockets on there, one on the top and the bottom, and of course one on the front here, which is the way this plug has been put in. And uh, the plug is well and truly wedged in there, so there's simply no way of getting that out uh, normally. It's also one of these plugs with the uh, shiny silver coverings on the pins there, so I'm not entirely sure what kind of metal that's made of. And uh, the flex course has just been cut off in order to remove it from the socket. Now it does come with a note here, so uh, as it's here, this uh, three-way adapter is of a type I haven't seen before, but still for sale online and in low price retailers. Design seems less not optimal in respect of clearance of the flex when all the sockets are in use, and this is quite right because this one isn't here. If you put one in the top, then it's not too bad because the flex would come out of here and sort of drape down the front. But of course the problem is when you put one in the bottom, then the two flexes are going to basically jam up in the middle here, so uh, obviously one overlaps the other, so certainly not the best design. The other more common style of these has the three, but the two are there, and then the other one's actually on the side, so the three flexes sort of do go past each other, but uh, this particular one certainly not ideal with it coming out of the bottom. Now uh, the uh, the molded plug that was attached to a uh, kettle, two and a half kilowatts, and that's bought last year. So anyway, the story here, as we've got here, is that uh, he believes that the uh, jostling of the flex during the day and endlessly unplugging the other devices has basically left to some kind of loose connection or something occurring there, and uh, hence we've now got this uh, horrible melted mess, and we can just about see inside there that there is a certain amount of plastic melting on the pin on this side. And bearing in mind, that's going to be the line pin, so that myth about it always being the neutral clearly isn't true, because in this case uh, it obviously isn't. So uh, anyway, that set we've got there, this comes from uh, Joined Up John, at the bottom there. So that's what we've got here, and it's a uh, PIFCO branded item, code there BLA113, and it's got the other markings on there, so BS1363, which is the uh, obviously layout of the plug and the pins and whatever. Total load must not exceed 13 amps, and it does have a fuse in the side here, and the usual do not put in the bin and all that, and AC only. And uh, maybe to see down there, the screws that hold this together are some annoying uh, tri wing design with sort of three uh, bits there. So it's not likely we're going to get those out because, unfortunately, though I've got a whole set of these bits, and in fact, we have got some of those, you can see how deeply they are recessed in there, and uh, of course, all those bits you get to fit in these generally are fairly short, and the other problem is these holes are actually a fairly small diameter, so uh, getting something down there is going to be fairly challenging. But uh, we do have a fuse there, and that's one certain benefit of this thing, in that uh, regardless of what you plug in, you are going to be limited to the 13-amp uh, fuse, as we've got here. Now, let's see what sort of uh, brand of fuse we've got. So 13 ounce Seman, whoever they might be. Is it genuine? Well, it's anybody's guess, but uh, certainly it's not a uh, brand I've seen before, but there we go, it's yet another one of these pseudo brands to add to the collection. And apparently it's lead free, because of course that's a top priority when considering a fuse, because uh, obviously everyone uh, grinds these up and has them for dinner. So there we go. Now the thing itself, uh, I say it does have the shutters on, but of course that's required anyhow. And of course the uh, problem here is almost certainly going to be caused by a loose connection, either due to the plug pin not fitting correctly or the thing inside the socket not fitting correctly. Now the question is, can we actually get this out of here? Of course some uh, damage is going to be required, so it does actually pry out of there. See various bits of plastic have uh, fallen away there. And the hole there, you can see the plastic has significantly deformed around it. So this is the kind of plastic which actually melts and deforms. Not really the best uh, material to use for this. And if we have a look at the plug itself. So essentially what's happened is that this has obviously got extremely hot. And all of the plastic insulation here for the sleeved pin has basically gone. It's completely uh, 
fallen away there and all we've got left is this little tiny bit at the bottom where it's sort of been scrushed up against the back of the plug. Now this should have a fuse in it as well of course because all UK plugs uh, actually do so see what we've got here. Now this is a kettle two and a half kilowatts so you would expect this to be a 13 amp fuse. Certainly wouldn't work for long if it was a uh, smaller value and uh, just pry this out here see what kind of brand we have on this one. So in this case then what have we got here? An Asia fuse and it's a 13 amp of course has all the usual markings on and it claims to be uh, BS 1362. So uh, there we go, yet another mystery sort of brand. Compared to the other one, of course, it's uh, pretty much identical in external appearance, but then, of course, uh, they should be. So, uh, Seman and Asia Fuse, whoever they might be. Now, the plug itself doesn't look too bad in terms of construction. It certainly is of the right kind of size. Got the fuse inside there, it's got the uh, required markings and things on both sides into tech, yes, well that may or may not be a uh, reputable uh, certification organisation. These pins are fairly solid but this one is actually quite loose in the housing but of course that's going to be due to the heat damage we saw there so uh, getting hold of that there is a significant amount of movement coming out of that but uh, nevertheless it doesn't appear to be an absolutely terrible example and in terms of the flex here it does have a reasonable amount of material in there so again I don't think there's anything particularly Majorly wrong with that. Claimed on the size here to be 3 core and it's 1.0 millimeter squared, so a bit on the lightweight side for a kettle. But they're probably relying on the fact that a kettle is only used fairly intermittently. It's only going to be obviously boiling at the water for a few minutes at each time, but uh, nevertheless, uh, fairly typical for what you get with kettles these days. So, as usual, I've had to drill out the uh, screws because uh, I seem to have everything that's uh, long enough to reach down in there. So anyway I've drawn those out and it's actually pushed them through the front face as well because we applied a substantial amount of force there. Now I'll just cut this label because of course that's over the seam. So I'll just cut through there. Notice this has some white emulsion paint on it as well which all electrical items in the world must have by law because uh, any of you find sockets which or anything else they always have a bit of that white paint squished over there. So uh, anyway let's see if we can uh, just get inside this thing and see what we've got. So there's the interior. And we can see on the front here we've got the uh, socket there on the front where the thing had obviously jammed in. And there's you can see the melting around the pin hole there quite clearly. And it's also melted a part of the shutter as well such that it's actually jammed in the open position. So even if you were actually to pry this out it's still unsafe because of course the uh, shutter now is permanently open bottom here we can see the shutter for the other plug there and of course the same one in the top there which would have pressed against the front over there so that's what we've got there and then here we've got inside the various contacts so the uh, earth comes through here basically just to the front there from the pin on the back the top one just goes through the uh, top here into that same piece of metal comes around to form the one at the front and also goes down the back there just form the earth connection on the bottom. Now these do appear to be at least just sort of riveted in there so reasonably well attached just goes through onto the pin on the front. And then we've got the two on the uh, sides here of course the line and the neutral. Now neutral actually comes through from the pin there and is riveted on again there so on this side we've just got the contact form here and again the same on the top there just goes up in a solid link there something has got a hole in the middle so it may be the same piece is used on the other side and of course the neutral on the front here actually goes across to the other side because this is effectively the other way up so neutral is over that side so the neutral is coming across there goes around the back and actually comes over to this piece over here so it's just sort of a folded metal that goes around and then the line coming in this side so we've got that there there is a rivet there but it doesn't go straight through it actually goes via this uh, fuse holder as well so basically this piece here is an independent item. You can remove that. So the pin actually goes up to the fuse holder there which then links across to the front and then we've got this piece which forms the three contacts for the socket. So uh, fuse holder there of course. That's the one where it had failed. You see it's fairly darkened and uh, blackened. 
one on the top and again the one on the bottom is the other way around so of course it goes over to the other side so perfectly reasonable design inside and of course the fuse then uh, is for all three of the outlets so you can only have a maximum of 13 amps from the entire thing and so this is the one here that uh, obviously got rather hot on that one and um, we can see there it's sort of uh, discoloured and on a sort of silvery colour which is probably some of the plating material whatever that's come off of the plug here. Now these bits of metal are not attracted to the magnet so they could well be the uh, brass or phosphor bronze or whatever else is used for socket contacts and they certainly look to be reasonably sized so in terms of uh, construction I don't think there's any major problem with that. A uh, plug here says so one of these with the shiny silver pins not attracted to the magnet but again that doesn't really uh, confirm a great deal there neither are the bits inside so in terms of uh, manufactured to whatever requirements are needed they're probably both made to a reasonable standard but what's happened here of course is either this contact has worn from having a high load on it all the time and it only takes a little bit of overheating to therefore soften the metal there or the uh, pin itself has uh, obviously overheated and become loose inside and then of course if that is loose in the back there where you can, there's a certain amount of wobble involved there any heat that's formed in the back will conduct through the pin and obviously melt this off and therefore damage the socket as well so it was one of those three-way adapters now this doesn't appear to have been constructed particularly badly but uh, as you can see there it only takes a slightly loose connection and then of course it's going to be melting and uh, actually things getting jammed in there now whether it was the adapter or the plug in this case isn't clear but uh, either way, that's the kind of thing you've got. And if you do get a plug which uh, does show that kind of damage there, it's always worth replacing the socket it was actually installed into, including if it's one that's in the wall, because of course uh, heat will cause damage to the contacts. Therefore, we're just going to just replace the plug, for example, and they find that uh, the problem returns. Now, I'm not a particular fan of these things because of the uh, mainly the sheer physical bulk of the thing. So when you've got that in the wall outlet and then a load of plugs on it, there's a huge amount of weight pulling down on this and sort of loose things and uh, plugs falling out is almost inevitable and then of course there's the other thing if someone just happens to knock into this massive thing it's very likely just to break the socket out completely and you can also buy certainly in the two-way these unfused versions which theoretically means you could plug 26 amps worth of stuff into a single 13 amp outlet so not the kind of thing you should be using if you do need to have more outlets get those uh, bar type ones with the short lead that goes into the socket certainly a much better design and if you want to send stuff in yourself then details of that are in the description to this video but until next time thanks for watching